Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm going to be returning to Rule the Wave, uh, but we are resuming our Rule the Waves Succession live stream, uh, which we played a couple of days ago, and uh, it is my attempt to make France great again after the follies of the XTRG administration and the successes of the Tortuga administration before it, the Historical Gamer Jr. has been leading a war against Italy, which has seen us obliterate almost the entirety of the Italian nation. Navy. We've sunk their entire battleship force and the majority of their battle cruiser force. Despite the fact that we started the war outnumbered heavily with two battle cruisers to the enemy eight and parity at battleships, it's turned out that the more heavily armored uh, French battle cruisers and battleships have fared far more favorably in this war to the Italian battle cruisers, which are much more lightly armored as well as lightly armed. The Italian ships tended to have lighter armaments and uh, they didn't fare as well in battle thus far. Nonetheless, guys, we're going to go ahead and jump right back into the live stream here. So I hope you guys enjoy and uh, please, please feel free to leave some comments below. Otherwise, guys, enjoy the video and let me know your thoughts. Thanks again. Good. And now, again, another fleet battle. This game is just throwing fleet battles out, and they're declining them all, which is good for us. I don't want to fight the small battle near Eritrea, but we can see we're also blockading the enemy. Our force is so much stronger than them that we are now blockading them. Okay. Submarine has been surprised and sunk by the Italian Q-ship. Okay, French intercepts raider, auto resolve. We sunk an enemy raider, another enemy light cruiser goes down. Okay. We should really be building more, right? Our entire fleet is going to be obsolete. German government's offering to sell stable explosive filler. Yeah, and we've got money, so why the hell not, right? Enemy submarine torpedoed and damaged the Brichelieu. Enemy submarine sunk our minesweeper. Coastal raid on the coast of France. Decline. Decline. I don't really feel like fighting these. And again, I know they're just going to decline fleet actions right now because they're too weak. Okay. The army wants more resources. That's fine. All right. Another battle. We want to destroy our bombardment target. We've got three light cruisers. We'll auto AI the destroyers. I'm sorry, this is really just turning into a never ending, never ending war. We'll see what the enemy brings to bear against us. We've got one target. Hopefully this will help. Again, I I don't know. Um, this war is turning into a slog. Let's see here. What is the enemy coming at us with? Is it really a heavy cruiser? No. It's a troop transport. That's fine. We'll go sink you. I'm always happy to sink enemy ships. We've literally like sunk the entire Italian Navy and they still haven't surrendered. Oh, enemy ships coming down. Are we even shooting at them? Okay. What are these enemy ships? Looks like they're sailing away from us. Must not be too superior in force to us. Maybe not, maybe they are. Okay, so we destroyed the bombardment target. It looks like there's a bunch of patrol ships. I'm not going to chase them in there. That's a fool's errand. And, uh, potential mines. So it just looks like a lot of enemy patrol ships.
Okay, well I guess we pull our fleet back. We sunk an enemy merchant and we also destroyed a bombardment target, which was the entire objective of our fleet. So we'll go ahead and fall back to this port here in Sardinia. The pasta shortages are growing day by day as the Italian people growing increasingly wary of the conflict. The Italian navy built at great expense has been abolished by the French navy. In a Herculean effort, some nine capital ships have been sunk in the Italian-French War, and yet the French army is struggling in the Italian Alps to gain any significant ground. So while the naval side has been all but decisive, the land side of the conflict has been indecisive, which has allowed Italy to hang on. Okay, another victory. I'm just waiting for their government to collapse. It seems like it should be what happens. Strikes and war demonstrations are rumored to be taking place in Italy. Okay, that's nice. But shouldn't they like do something? Again, I, I kind of feel like I'm racing through time. But... Like, what is the... Meh. The latest army offensive has been reasonably successful. So we've got like 58,000 victory points, and all we get for an army offensive is 400 victory points. We should not let them off night lightly. No common ground. So they've had food shortages for pretty much ever. Ugh. <sighs> Great. I'm just waiting for the government to collapse. Okay, fine. This war is dragging on. Coastal Patrol. There you go. We've got, like, no submarines. We're going to have a few more soon. Okay, another enemy ship sunk. Widespread food shortages. Really? You guys have been widespread food shortages for three years. Ooh, another fleet engagement. I wonder if the Italians finally have some of those battleships they've been building forever. Anyway, so we have the Tortuga Power and Solfrino. We've also got the Devastation. So we've got four, six battleships on the scene. Probably shouldn't get cocky, because who knows what could happen, but the goal is to send more Italian ships to the bottom in what is, must be an embarrassing battle. must be a very embarrassing war for the Italians thus far. Like, seriously. You fight and you lose every single battle, pretty much. A few minor victories, you know, with, with small numbers of ships engaged, but for the most part, they've lost every single battle. Unknown ship spotted. Where are they? Where are they? Okay. Increase speed to 19 knots. I wish our fleet could make faster speed. I mean, our other ships can, but... Tortuga, you built me a slow fleet. Okay. Let me light cruiser, it looks like. There's their battle fleet. Um, the Richelieu has 16-inch guns. So the Richelieu is kind of out there on its own. We've got the Tourville as well. So we've got two battle cruisers at the front of this engagement. Enemies divided into two wings, it looks like. Okay, so their main fleet's to the north. Our battle cruisers are doing the bulk of the fighting. But our battleships are closing in now. Again, this is more of a chasing action, although it looks like they've got a squadron here in the south as well. Oh, wait, I don't want. I'll let the AI control those destroyers. So 
So we've got three battleships down there. We've got ships chasing up here. I guess since these guys are on their own, we can sail these guys north. You know, all our ships in the south. Enemy ship hit by a torpedo. That's the Lepanto class battle cruisers. Okay. So it looks like we're fighting down there. Our AI is kind of taking control here. Meanwhile, we've got some ships up north. Nice. Three torpedoes into that. I'm assuming she'll sink. As we chase whatever is up here. These look more like destroyers. I'm kind of speeding through this, but... I don't even know. Where's the... The devastation is the one I'm controlling. So we're going to turn south now and cut off these Italian battle cruisers that were sail sailing somewhat parallel to our own. And our fleet is forming up in a line. So hopefully we can do some damage. Keep the distance a bit. Looks like the devastation is taking some damage. She's definitely slowing down a bit. So they're going to escape. Because we can't keep up, because we've taken damage. I don't really feel like... I don't know. Maybe I should want to pursue, but... What did it lose damage to? One turret knocked out. Whoa, that's a lot of structure damage. Man, her superstructure is beat to hell. Let's pull them out. I don't want to lose anything. Hope she doesn't sink. They pulled out anyway. We did sink another enemy battle cruiser. It is 1921. Yeah, we've... Oh, we struck a mine. Okay, so heavy damage to one battleship and one battle cruiser. But we sank two enemy battle cruisers sunk again. One more heavy damage, two more medium damage. Another decisive French victory. Even though we had a battleship strike a mine. Two more prestige. I mean, these aren't even fun battles anymore. We're just obliterating the front, the Italian Navy. It does look like their battleships that were being built are now in service. But they just lost two more battle cruisers. So, they're still blockaded. The government of Italy has collapsed. Finally! Yes! The government of Italy has collapsed in revolution. The prime minister has been executed. They have been forced to accept harsh peace conditions. Okay. So, pick ship as reparations. So, we've got two... Let's see, what are these? I mean, it'd be nice if I could see what these classes were. I don't know if we get any territory or if we just get ships. Um, we'll take a, one of their brand new Napoli class battleships. And allowed value of 10. But Sicily is 12. So we can't take Sicily. All we can take is Eritrea. I would love to take Sicily. But all we get is Eritrea. Okay. So, as you can see, Italy's last overseas colony is now French. Eritrea. The Navy, considerably exhausted. We did take one Napoli class, so 12 14-inch guns. That's a pretty good class. 23 knots. That's a good ship. Glad to add her to... The ranks of the French fleet, 28,000 tons. You can see here Italy has one battleship and has three battlecruisers. They're building three more. We have three. They have three. We've got four, but we're 
build we're building four plus our seven battleships. That's a decent fleet. Now our light cruisers are kind of getting up there in age. Destroyers as well. Large numbers of our ships are obsolete. We probably need to build a new destroyer class, a new light cruiser class. Not too strong on the heavy cruisers. I may even scrap them. Um, our budget's been reduced. Prestige has dropped, or tensions have dropped across the board. But we've got a healthy balance that we don't really need to scrap anything. Um, our submarine fleet was devastated by that war. They did quite a bit of damage to the enemy, but but devastated nonetheless. And at the end of the day, another glorious victory. The Italian fleet just, ooh, I mean, look at all these ships. And there were only like seven of these that were sunk in our first war. So another devastating blow to the Italian Navy. Four battleships sunk, one lost to us. Oh my God, seven battle cruisers sunk. One heavy cruiser, this one was in the old war. And numerous light cruisers, AMCs, destroyers. That was just a, a vicious war for them. Now, we did lose some forces as well. So we actually lost the Marseille, which was a battle cruiser. We lost the Leclerc and the Sacre Bleu, two historical gamer class ships. But they were obsolete at the time. And we lost a few heavy cruisers. We actually lost two in our last war. So really, you know, we lost five or six heavy cruisers and a handful of destroyers. But at the end of the day, the Italian fleet was almost annihilated completely. And uh, we won yet another victory. So we are into January of 1922. So we played all of 1918, 1919, 20, and 21. We're four years into our six-year tenure. We haven't done much to rebuild the French Navy. You know, we were kind of caught in the midst of a war. Uh, we do have some ships that are about halfway completed. Uh, some very good battleships that are about halfway completed. 22 knots, 17-inch main guns, six, 14 of them on these ships. And uh, I think, you know, our prestige is up to 63. So obviously this is a, a very successful campaign thus far. We're now into 1922. We just won a large victory against Italy. But unfortunately, we were only to take, we were only able to take the province of Eritrea over here. This tiny little province uh, doesn't have very much in the way of value. Um, let's see here. French base capacity is 85 because we took it from Italy. Um, well, actually, this is, that's this whole region. But it's a relatively small port. So if we go ahead and we actually click on the province, you can see here its value is only 2. And it has one port, base capacity of 20. We still have no oil as France, and it's 1922. So without access to oil, I don't think we can really build oil-based ships, which is unfortunate. So we continue to have to rely on coal-based warships. The Navy's in a little bit of a tough, sh tough shape. The war just ended, so the budget decreased pretty substantially. Uh, we have four massive battleships under construction, 43,000 tonners. They make 22 knots, and if we click on them here, they have 14 17-inch guns. These are the most powerful battleships built in the world for sure. They certainly would rival Yamato in terms of firepower, just given the number of guns they have, even though they're slightly smaller than Yamato's historical 18-inch guns. The belt armor's on par with the Iowa class, actually. 12 inches seems light, but that's actually what the Iowas have. The area they're weak is the turret armor. The Iowas had 20-inch turrets, and these are only 12 and a half. These will get pierced by butter against anything, you know, 16 or larger. I think even 15-inch guns may pierce them. So they're kind of vulnerable to being taken out. Now, the nice thing is we have so many guns on the ship. You know, you take out one turret, and we've still got, uh, depending on the turret, we've still got 10 to 11 17-inch guns, you know, more than a match for anything else. We'd have to lose two turrets, and even then, the the weight of our broadsides would be pretty impressive. The speed of 22 knots is pretty decent as well for a ship of this size and this armament, uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. But we need to do more than just the battleships. If we go back and look at our navy, you'll see here that we have quite a few ships that with this little O next to them, which what that means is those ships are obsolete. So basically the navy is saying these ships aren't fit for combat, and they're eating up a lot of our money. Uh, again, we're in the red, but we've got $85 million in the bank. So at current spending rates, we have, uh, I can't do math, we've got ooh, 15 months or so worth of, of cash on hand, which should allow us to get through building the majority of these before you know we run out of money. However, that assumes we do nothing with the rest of our Navy, and obviously we need to do some things with the rest of our Navy. So what we may end up doing is pausing these ships briefly, um, you know, depending on where we're at financially or where the budget goes, because obviously a year is a long time in this game and the budget could change pretty substantially. 
What I'd like to do is I'd like to go ahead and see, are there any of these ships that are worth saving? My initial reaction, because this, this episode or this stream is going to be largely based around refitting our Navy and getting it ready. I don't think we're going to fight another war before our tour is up. Um, but as I was saying here, you can see here we've got a lot of obsolete ships. Now the three that stand out to me are the two Le Tour de Trevilles and the Dupert the Dubet Torres. Now we could rebuild these, and basically what you do is just right click on it, open design for rebuild. So let's say we want to make them faster, replace the machinery. You can see here that instantly saves 300 tons worth of weight. We could use that to bump the ship up by two knots or so. You know, just re reduce the secondary armament by two guns. Maybe we could even get three knots out of her with like a few minor changes that I don't think make a big difference. We could get her up to 25 knots easily and still have a relatively powerful ship. You know, the five inch guns instead of sixes, but still, we could make these changes. The problem is, we would spend $21 million. A new ship of this class would cost $44 million. We'd spend $21 million getting a 25 knot undergun ship. 25 knots is about on par with the Japanese battle cruisers. I'd kind of figure this would be like a colonial station ship. But the problem is 8-inch guns, they'll penetrate the 6 inches of armor that I looked at most of the Japanese battle cruisers or the older ones as having, but it'll take a year to build this at almost 2 million a turn, and there's only one of them. So why would we do that, right? I mean, there's just one ship. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not fast enough to really justify the expense, in my opinion. Um, what, would the, what would the role be? We could bring it back home and have it operate with the fleet, but again, 8-inch guns, when we could be spending the, the 200000 in maintenance on something else, you know, something a little bit better, um, you know, I don't, I don't really see the point um, of doing that. The flip side is the La Tour de Treville. It's a little bit bigger, so we've got a little bit more to work with. It's 15,000 tons, so we could probably get an extra knot, get it up to 26 knots. That starts to, becoming, starts to become appealing until you realize you have to have two separate rebuilds, because I was an idiot, and I upgraded one of them and not the other while they were under construction because a new fire control became available. But as a result, these are actually two separate classes. The La Tour de Treville Rebuild 1907 is a different class than the 1907A, which means I'd have to do two separate rebuilds, which, again, would not be the best thing to do. Plus, I have to bring them all the way back from the foreign colonies. So I don't think we're going to do that. We are going to bring them back. We're going to bring them back from our colonies overseas, but uh, we'll probably end up scrapping them instead. Um, it'll save us quite a bit of money in upkeep, uh, more than enough for a single battleship, maybe two battleships worth of upkeep, much more powerful, faster, you know, bigger, stronger, whatever ships. So we can save about 800,000, a little bit more than 800,000 by scrapping these three ships, and we will do that at some point soon. So we're not going to upgrade those cruisers. Now, the pre-dreadnought battleships are not obsolete. They were recently rebuilt as early as 1913, which is still nine years ago, but 22 knots is pretty decent for them. They've got a decent armament of 12-inch guns, they've got a good secondary armament of 6-inch guns, and they've got decent armor at 10 inches. I almost could be tempted to use them as cruisers. The problem is they're still really expensive to be cruisers, and they won't really... They won't fare well. We're not going to be able to get them up to 26 knots. You know, we could do a rebuild and maybe get them to 24 or 25 even, but they're not going to be able to operate against battle cruisers and battleships. And if we're trying to put them overseas, my main overseas antagonist is either going to be Great Britain, which has 21 dreadnoughts and no pre-dreadnoughts still in service, so anything they meet would horribly outclass them, or Japan, who does still also has no battleships left in service. In fact, we're one of only two nations to still have battleships in service that aren't yet dreadnoughts. So if we look at this, we can see here that Japan would probably be who we'd be operating against. We'd probably use them to counter the one Japanese cruiser, maybe the Japanese battle cruisers, which are a little bit, you know, more lightly armored and not that fast. But at the end of the day, it's probably still not work, worth it. The oldest Japanese battle cruiser, yeah, the 12-inch guns could penetrate its armor. They'd actually outgun it in terms of the caliber. But six guns to four, 16 six-inch guns to, what, 12? It's just not a good idea. So we're not going to go ahead and upgrade those. We will end up scrapping these eventually, but not quite yet. And again, that'll save us about a million dollars in uh, per month turn. So you can see these are areas where we can we can pick up some savings. We can save a little bit of money and uh, use it more efficiently for the fleet. So that kind of rules out any of these. Uh, the Devastations should be rebuilt. These are decent ships. They're, they were kind of the workhorses for us in this most recent most recent war. They're a little bit expensive, uh, 400,000 maintenance. You can ignore the eight because that's just because they're being repaired. Uh, but you can see here, these were the workhorses of our fleet in the last war. 10, 15-inch guns, very good guns. 
The speed is a problem, so we may need to see if we can up that at all. The armor is a little bit light on the belt. Uh, the turret even is still a little bit light as well. Um, but nonetheless, these are good enough ships worth saving, and they're only 12 years old. Uh, they fall under the Dreadnought class, so we'll probably figure out a way to save the Devastations. There was a 1916 rebuild, actually, uh, we can see here, um, but it is... Damn. Now that that one is rebuilt and these three aren't, we'll have to do separate rebuilds, I think. But anyway, um, so we will save that. Uh, we have... The Jagurobari, the 12, 14 inch single uh, ship of the Napoli class, I think. A 1921 rebuild? How's that possible? I didn't rebuild that ship. I don't think I rebuilt that ship. I don't remember rebuilding that ship. That certainly would have happened under my rule. Well, 14 inch guns. Huh, I don't remember doing that. All right, well, it might have been actually under construction while uh, while I took over, and then it got put into service, I think is what happened. Um, we may rebuild the battle cruiser, the Dunquais, but again, this is probably all getting into territory where we're not going to have enough time before we're kicked from power because we only have two years left. So I think the focus that we really want to look at is we want to go ahead and rebuild, for sure, the Sardinia class. It's a 5,500-ton uh, protected cruiser only makes 23 knots. It's got some pretty good guns, eight six inchers in turrets, and then it has ten uh, three inchers. I'm not so sold on the three inchers. They're encasemates. They're not that useful anymore. And rapid firing six inch guns uh, are probably sufficient for it. Um, I'm not too worried about destroyers overwhelming us. Frankly, uh, destroyers are getting big enough at this point that you know if they're going to overwhelm us, it's going to be with torpedoes. And speed is more useful than small guns against that. So that's the first thing we're going to do today. We're going to go ahead and go into the Sardinia class. And I'm sorry if I sound out of breath, guys, uh, but I uh, might be talking a little bit too quick. But we're going to go into the Sardinia class. We're going to go ahead and replace machinery. And you can see just by doing that, we will save 300 tons, which will instantly give us the ability to upgrade the speed, well, by two knots, from 23 to 25 knots, and still be in a good situation with our weight. Now you can see here... Upping the speed and replacing the machinery isn't terribly cheap. It's going to cost us 800000 to rebuild this one ship for 10 months. That's what the cost will be. It's about half of the overall cost of the vessel. It's about a $19 million ship, and this total upgrade would cost $8 million. Still, I think that's a good bargain. You basically get three new cruisers for half price, right? I mean, they're not perfect cruisers. They're not the ideal cruiser, what you'd necessarily build if money was an object, object but they're certainly useful. Um, but I don't want just 25 knots, because honestly, most of the cruisers at this point are 30 knots. I'm not too concerned about what the other cruisers are, frankly, because we'll probably use them as screening vessels. So they just need to be a little bit faster than our battleships. They don't need to be uh, crazy fast, because, you know, if they get 31 knots, that's going to waste. Our battle fleet will never need them to operate at 31 knots. But they may need to operate at, you know, 26, 27, 28, so they can get out and kind of entangle up with uh, patrol boats that are attacking or other cruisers. Um, it will limit our ability to pursue, admittedly, against other light forces, but they'll be more than fast enough to keep up with any battleships, because I don't know of any country that has 25 not battleships yet. Certainly battle cruisers, but not battleships. Okay, so that's where we're at right now, but we're going to make it a little bit faster. I've already said I'm not really sold on the 3-inch secondaries. I'm going to take a little bit of a risk, and I'm just going to eliminate them altogether. All 10 of those are going to go away. And that gets us up to 250 tons. Uh, of free space. So we can go ahead and assign one more knot, get us up to 26 knots, and you can see here, no secondaries. We can now move three knots faster than we could before. I'm also going to check the Colonial Service box. I don't know how that affects a rebuild, but check it anyway, and maybe it'll operate better overseas against the Japanese. So 26 knots will make it faster than some light cruisers, not any of the newer ones, but some of the light cruisers already in service, faster than all the battleships, and on par with a good deal of the battle cruisers. Not all of them, but some of them. Um, and then we've still got 75 tons left over, so I'm going to go ahead and add some torpedo mounts. I think we can probably get two, and it's just because I have three automatically selected. And there you go. So we now have six torpedo tubes on the ship instead of four, so an increase in two torpedoes I think offsets for the loss in calibers. Uh, you also have three knots faster of speed. At the end of the day, it's going to cost us 13 million over 12 months. That's about a million a month. Uh, just a little bit less than half the cost of a brand new cruiser. And again, it allows us to upgrade some of these cruisers uh, to a little bit better, um, little bit better quality, 
you know, we're not going to build a ton of them. We're just going to rebuild the three we already have in service. And I think it's more efficient to do that, you know, to, to keep existing ships than it is to uh, replace or build completely new ones if they're not, if, if these could still be useful. Now, one other thing I forgot to do, range firing. We we're all the way up to improved directors, so we need to do that. That will put us into the red. We'll just cut some ammo. 135. Well, let's give a little bit of a buffer. 130 rounds should be sufficient, I think for six inch guns. It's the only weapon they have in the ship plus the torpedoes, but it looks okay. So there you go. The Sardinia rebuild uh, will allow us to have slightly more effective cruisers at the expense of three inch guns, which don't do much to begin with, except maybe wreck the superstructure of a destroyer. But again, now that destroyers can be 1500 tons, three inch guns are much less effective against them than they used to be when they were only 500 ton, basically torpedo boats. So that also increases the cost slightly to do the director, but whatever. Uh, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and save that rebuild. Sardinia 1922. And there you have it. So we can go ahead and rebuild this ship to the Sardinia 1922. It's going to cost $1.1 million per month. Again, $14 million over 12 months. So we can rebuild one of them. Actually, we can rebuild all of them. because none of these have been upgraded. And the nice thing is, because it's not a brand new class, we don't get a cost to develop the first one. So there you go. Puts us way further into the red, but it gets us started on rebuilding our navy. These three ships are also going to serve overseas once they're completely done, so I will be replacing some of our overseas cruisers with these when they're done. Um, let's take a look here. Make sure, yep, the Colonial Service stuck, so this should be ideal for serving in foreign waters. All right, folks, I appreciate you tuning in once again, and I hope you enjoyed one of the final live streams of the Rule the Waves Succession series, at least in terms of my reign as leader of France. We are drawing to a close. Uh, we are closing in on the end of our reign. We are four years in. You can see here with about, uh, as we, this was the beginning of another live stream, uh, but we've only got a little bit less than an hour worth of footage left. So uh, there will probably only be one, maybe two more episodes left with me in charge as France, unless somehow I wage some sort of coup d'etat against Tortuga, who will take over here shortly for me. Uh, but in the meantime, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy the next video. And then once that's over, I hope you go on over to Tortuga's channel and check out as we continue to power forward with France. I've kind of already recapped a couple times in this video, but on the whole, things are going very well for France under my reign. A second victory over Italy, a dramatic increase in the number of battleships, and the beginning of a fleet modernization program, which will see France make its navy great once more. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And and with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. We'll see you again tomorrow. And thanks again for tuning in, guys. This is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.